me. Now, I'm not asking you to pray for 21 days, but I'm asking you, who is ready to take it to the next level? Who wants to have God move in a mighty way by following his word? <laughs> Praise God. This is the mentality I want us to have. It says, thy mercy is great unto the heavens and thy truth unto the clouds. Now understand, the heavens is up in outer space, light years away. So what God is really telling us is this mercy is that big. I mean, we can't even really fathom and get our hands around how big that is because we can't go to the heavens. And if we tried, how long would it take us to get there? Probably take us so long, by the time we get back, it would be so long that we'd be too old and then we'd be like an old man. The world would be completely different because of light. When you go light years away, you know, time still is going at a certain rate here. God's trying to tell us exactly how big that is. The mercy is great unto the heavens, which is great beyond conception and expression. We can't even communicate how big and how great and how large his mercy is. And because he's so merciful to us, we should be willing to take it to that next level for him. Can I get an amen? That's, that's my goal, church. Listen, and maybe, maybe you're not going through what I'm going through. Maybe I'm going through things that are worse. And that's why I'm willing to take it so to, to a high level. But listen, don't wait until it, because yours is coming. Some of you are already going through yours too. But some of you are not. And it's coming. And we've got to be armored up, church. Don't wait. See, you know what? You know the mistake I made when I fasted for that situation that I was going to deal with last week? I waited until the day before to fast. I might have been too late. Now, I don't know if it was. It might have gone that way anyway. But if it was my fast that was going to have any effect on it, maybe I, I waited too late. So there's a whole bunch of things coming up in, in my path that are just drama and craziness. So I'm just going to pray and fast for the next 21 days. I'm not going to wait. I don't even know the date of one of them, that hearing that got postponed. I don't even know what the date is. But I'm going to start praying and fasting right now for that situation. And I believe the Lord is going to make it happen. And I want the church to, to follow my mentality and faith going through whatever situation. Is, who, who has somebody to pray for? Who has somebody that they want to be touched or changed or saved? Who in here is going through something dramatic and challenging and you need some power of God? We've got to take, I'm going to give you an opportunity to hit this altar and, and, and make some commitments and start your walk with God at a higher level. If we want to stay the same, you can, but that's not what this church is about. We want, to, who wants to be a Navy SEAL for God? I'm not interested in being a Boy Scout, a Weebelow, a Cub Scout. Not interested in that. I want to be a Navy SEAL for the Lord. I want to be special forces for the Lord. I want to have training and combat readiness inside of me. Mm. His truth is like the clouds, which is the same thing as saying great beyond discovery. You can't even, how many clouds are there on the planet? <laughs> that, that is just an un understandable number and his truth is that real and is that great if we will follow it Psalms 59 and 8 we're almost done Psalms 59 and 8 take us down we're gonna go 8 to 17 and we're not gonna do all of them we're gonna be going through it 8 9 10 12 13 16 17 <clears throat> praise God Praise God. But thou, O Lord, shalt laugh at them. Thou shalt have all the heathen in derision or to be mocked. Verse 9, because of his strength will I wait upon thee for God is my defense. I have a whole message I preach on God being your defense. I'm not going to do that right now. We'll just take that for face value. If you're going through something in your life, God is your defense.
Don't try to defend yourself. God is going to take care of you, but there is a prerequisite. You've got, going right back to the first scripture, you've got to be in his covenant. That's why we come here. Because if we don't come here, we might not be able to stay in God's covenant. If you're not going to church, how long are you going to stay repentant? I've watched people do it over the last 10 years. And it doesn't last very long. Because you're not getting the spiritual food you need. If you're not going to church, then why pray? <laughs> I'm not going to church. What am I going to pray for? I'm certainly not going to fast. We begin to deteriorate spiritually. So we need to keep his covenant. And then we can lean on God as our defense. Oh, come on now somebody. There are people right now who are leaning on God for their defense. But they're not in his covenant. So he is not their defense. But they think that he is, or they hope, or they wish that he is, but he's not. We've got to make sure we have both. Being in his covenant, you've got to be repentant, baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins, and receive the Holy Ghost, evidence of speaking in tongues. If that has not happened, you need to achieve that portion of your covenant with God. If you have, then the rest is walking in the spirit that you may stay in his covenant. Being in the house of the Lord is part of that. That's why we come together. And if you're doing that, God is and will be your defense. You can wait on him, call on him, and understand no matter what happens, God is your defense. Isn't that wonderful to have the ability to have the faith, no matter what's going on in your life, God's got your back. Who wants that in their life? Who wants that in their life? God got my back. I'm all right. Doesn't mean we're not going to fear, but we can alleviate that fear by understanding and faith because we are in his covenant. Verse 10 says, The God of my mercy shall prevent me. God shall let me See my desire upon mine enemies. Now understand, I want to I go someplace before we finish this portion. I pray for my enemies. That's what the Bible says to do. And if you have an enemy, it doesn't always mean that you've caused uh, yourself to have that person as an enemy. Some people just don't like you. They don't like you because you live for God. They don't like you because you may have compromised uh, some things for holiness or to be more modest that you're different than they are and they resent you for it. Just because you have made some changes in your life to live for God. Uh, you don't go to the bar no more. So now you're, they, they think you're judging them. Oh, well, we're not good enough for you anymore. Well, no, I just don't want that in my life. So through your walk with God, who here has ever had anybody attack them? Raise your hand. Who's everybody attack you? You didn't even know why. You're like, what is wrong with what? What? <laughs> What's going on here? But you will acquire enemies. Now, the first thing that needs to happen in your life is you need to pray for your enemies. Pray good things for them. Pray for them to have uh, uh, repentance in their life, uh, whether they're in the church or not. Pray for them to get saved and get the power of God and have love and mercy in their hearts, and they will change and they and they will be different. I have there was a guy who was coming here, uh, Ray Ramirez. He had a guy that him and were just enemies for years, and they, and, and and Ray got saved, or, or he says he got saved. I don't know what doctrine he was in. He was in another church, um, so I, don't, I haven't talked to him about what he was doing. But he felt he had a relationship with God and just the relationship he believed he had was enough the next time he saw that person said hey can we go have some coffee and that person received it but was kind of taken back but you know what because of his mercy his gentleness and his love and kindness they're not enemies anymore and this person is, is not even uh, in church right now that I know of but we're talking about the ability to step out in faith and act differently and you're going to get enemies for doing that. But if you have enemies, pray for them. But this is what, this is interesting, but this is what God says about your enemies. Because Paul, or David is talking, saying because of his mercy, God shall let us see his desires upon his enemies. Verse 12 says, for the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips... Let them even be taken in their pride and for cursing and for lying which they speak. Consume them, <coughs> consume them in wrath. Now wait a minute, Pastor. <coughs> We're supposed to pray for our enemies where we are. 
But if God is going to consume them in wrath, that's between them and God. Understand, people are going to pay a price for their behavior, and so are we. So we must, by nature, adjust our behavior to please God. Mm, come on, somebody. <coughs> we want to please God. So we have to watch our behavior. People who are not looking to please God, they can do whatever they want. <clears throat> Even if they say, I'm, I'm here to please God, if they're not, they're going to do whatever they want. And them doing what they want will prove that they're not really interested in pleasing God. They're interested in pleasing themselves. You can tell someone who's interested in pleasing God based on how they act. So God, in verse 13 here it says, will consume them in wrath. And it says, and let them know that God ruled in Jacob unto the ends of the earth, Selah. They may not exist anymore. Because <clears throat> the scripture right before that says, they may not be. Consume them in wrath, consume them that they may not be. That means that they might be taken out. Now I'm not going to pray that. But that still could happen to the people who attack you if you're going to be a Christian. Listen, what more reason does that give us to want to please the Lord? Not only does he have our back, but he is going to take out our enemies even if we pray for them. Now, he might decide to answer your prayer and go ahead and remove the scales from their eyes or, or, or let them see again or let the, the evil spirit be lifted from them. Because God can send an evil spirit. How do we know that? Who did he send an evil spirit to? He sent an evil spirit to Saul, King Saul, who attacked David. Who else did he send a spirit to? <coughs> I don't know if it was an evil spirit, but he hardened Saul's heart. He turned uh, um, Pharaoh, did I say, he turned Pharaoh heart, heart hard and, and then sent the prophet. So we understand that God can make someone act a certain way if he wants to. He can also send them a strong delusion that they would believe a lie. So what we're going to do is we're going to pray for our enemies and then we're going to let God have his way. But understand that if people don't get it right, if you have God as your defense, God could take them out. You know what that means? Wow, we're going to have fun today. You know what that means? You don't have to. It means you don't have to. You don't have to take him out. Because God's got things under control according to his word. Now that can be a tough one. Because sometimes you actually have the means to take out that person. Whether it be physical. You have the physical ability. Or you have the ability to say something or do something that could retaliate against your enemy. But God says, let me handle it. Now, are we always going to do that perfect? <laughs> probably not you know what's going to determine how well you can do that what will determine how well you can step back and let God have his way to defend you and to take on your battles what will determine that your what your relationship with God in walking in the spirit the more you're walking in the spirit the more ability you'll have to step back and say you know what I'm going to let God do it I could do it I could go over there and do this I could do that or I could do the other but you know what I'm going to step back and let God do it you know what that's called that's called having mercy on somebody wow that's called meekness isn't that what God said? Meekness is what we're supposed to be developing as part of walking in the Spirit. As having meekness. Meekness is the ability to wipe someone out and not doing it. Let me tell you something. I've done both. I've walked in meekness. Right now I'm walking in meekness. But before, when I wasn't walking in the Spirit as much, I have retaliated. And I'm here to tell you, walking in meekness feels a lot better. It feels a lot better because you feel like you're closer to God. When you're on the attack and you're trying to take someone out, you feel like the enemy because that's what the enemy does. You are more connected with the enemy when you act. Oh, come on, somebody. When you act like the enemy. You know what we're learning right now? We're learning how to walk in our daily lives. This is food for you to learn how to walk in your daily lives. Because you're all going to have people who are going to attack you. You're all going to have people who don't like you. You're all going to have family who attack you. You're going to have family that don't like you. 
And when you walk in the way that I'm teaching right now, when you treat your regular family and your church family like this, you can walk in peace. You can walk in peace. Listen, we have not had a situation. We've got about 60 people here right now. We have not had a situation where we have, in this group, had people going at it against each other. So what I'm talking about probably more for you guys is the idea of others attacking you. But you know what I want is when the enemy does try to turn you against Sister Thelma or Sister Thelma against Tiffany or Sister Cash against uh, 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 Rochelle. When that does happen, I want the church to be able to go, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not of God. That's a trick. I love my sister. I love my brother. I love my pastor. And I'm not letting the enemy come between me and my family. My church family or my regular family. Who wants to walk in peace today? Woo come on. <laughs> God is so good. Praise the, praise the Lord on high. Hallelujah. Last one. Look at that timing. My baby come just in time. Didn't even have to call her. Last one. Verse 16, but I will sing of thy power. Yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning. For thou hast been my defense, there it is again, and my refuge in the day of my trouble. Unto thee, O oh, my strength, will I sing for God is my defense. There it is again, and, God, and the God of my mercy. Stand up. Oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Listen to what we're saying, church. Why do you think I want us to all sing together? Why do you think we go through so much trouble to put the words up? Because when you participate under the Lord because of his mercy and understand he's your defense and try to connect with him yeah. in a way Hallelujah. that you're taking the song literally, God breathe on me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I feel the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. What was the last song we sang? Hallelujah. What was the one before that? This is the day. Huh? This is the day. This is the day that the Lord. These are not just songs, church. This is the day that the Lord hath made. And I'm going to celebrate in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because of his mercy. Yes. Hallelujah. He's been merciful. He gets my back. And you know what's funny is I've just been preaching on mercy. I'm, there are those that will think that I'm preaching this in direct relation to my problems, but I'm really not. I felt the Lord was telling me to preach on mercy, and these are the things that just came out. Praise God. If, if anybody hears and then the sound of their voice that this applies to you, then listen to what it's saying and adjust your life. That includes the internet group that watches online. If this applies to you, change. And God will bless you. God will have mercy on your soul. In Jesus' name, can I get an amen? amen. I want you to understand that these altars are now open for you to come to the presence of the Lord. To come in His presence and repent if need be. If that's what has to happen. If God has had mercy on you in any situation, you need to thank Him. You need to find yourself in a position of making some commitments unto the Lord. There is something holding down this church. I feel it in my spirit, and I do not want that to be happening any longer. We'll, we'll deal with it as long as it's here, but I'm going to fight to have that removed. Elliot, I got it over here. I want that to be removed from us. I want us to hear the word and follow and practice what I'm talking about so that we may take things to the next level. In the name of Jesus, these altars are open for you right now.
and I 